Hello. In our lesson for today, we are going to learn about the factored form of the quadratic function, how to factor the quadratic expressions, and how to use the factoring in solving the quadratic inequalities. So, let's get started. We know from before that Quadratic function has the standard form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus e. And the vertex form, which is f of x equals a times x minus h, all of e squared plus k, in which the vertex has coordinates hk. Our lesson, as we said, for today, it's about the factored form of the quadratic function, which is f of x equals a times x minus p times x minus q. If we have the function in the factored form, it will be very easy to find the x-intercept of that parabola. We remember that the x-intercept, it's the point where the graph parabola intercepts the x-axis and has the symbol x0, 0 for y. So imagine that if y variable, y, y coordinate is 0, then instead of f of x, we will put 0, and it will be a times x minus p times x minus q equals to 0. So from the factored form, we will get the x-intercepts of the function. Remember that product, it is 0, if and only if, at least one of the factors, it is zero. A, it's a constant number, so we do not take it, but here we have the variable. So, one of the factors, it's x minus p equals to zero, or x minus q, it can be equals to zero. From the first one, we solve for x, which equals to p. From the second one, we solve for x, which is equals to q. So, the two x intercepts, they will be p and q. But that we can factor the quadratic function, we need to know how to, to factor the quadratic expression. So, let me just remind it to you, and after we will start practicing. So, if we have in general ax squared plus bx plus e, to factor it, use the x method. So, I'm going to put a big x here. On top of x, we will write the product a times c. Down, we will put the value of the coefficient b. In left and right, we have to write two fractions. In these two fractions, denominator, it will be a coefficient x, a coefficient x, x, x in both of the sides, because x squared, it, ca it came from x times x. In place of numerator, we will think about two numbers. When I have the two numbers, number one and number two, when we multiply them, their product, it will be AC. And when we will add them, their sum, it will be the B coefficient in the middle. When we get the two numbers, we will put them here in place of numerator. From these two fractions, in simplest form, we will find the factor of the quadratic expression. So we will start from denominator going up. The factors they will be ax plus n1 times ax plus n2. And let's see. So it is given x squared minus 5x minus 24. This expression, we have to factor it. First of all, remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus e, where a, it's the coefficient of x squared, b, it's the coefficient of x, and c, it's the free term. So, let's find them in the given expression. a, we said it's the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, b, 
it's the coefficient of x, which is negative 5, and c, it's the free term, which is a negative 24. And now use the x method on the top And here, left and right, we make it fraction. A coefficient, it is 1, x, and I put the same thing here. And now, A times C equals, A, it is 1, and C negative 24. So, 1 times negative 24, it's a negative 24. And we put it on the The B coefficient, it is negative we put it here. Now we think about two numbers. When we multiply them, the product is negative 4 and when we will add is negative 5. And the two numbers are negative 8 times 3. So when we multiply them is negative 24 and when we will add them, it will be equals to negative 5. So the two numbers, we will put them in place of and 3. To fraction. From the first fraction, we'll get x minus 8. The first factor. Times. From the second fraction, it will be x plus 3. And these are the two factors we were looking for. Let's try more. A coefficient, it is 5. B, it is 3. And C, it is negative 2. Let's draw the x on the top A times C. Down it is 3. Left and right, we have the fraction. We said in place of denominator, we put the A coefficient C. So, times C. Times C. Now, we look for the two numbers in place of numerator. And we think A times C, first of all, it will be 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10. And the B coefficient, it is 3. So now let's think. What are the two numbers? When we multiply their product, it will be negative 10. And when we will add, it will be 3. It will be 5 times negative 2. When we multiply them, the product is negative 10. And when we will add them, their sum is 3. The two numbers, 5 and negative 2, we will put them in place of numerator. 5, negative 2. And we start with the two points, which is the right and the left, and the left is the position of our right. So this is the one over x. And the friction in the right, we cannot simplify it. So from the first one, the factor it will be, From the second one, 5x minus 2. Done. Let's try more. This is a quadratic equation, and to solve it, first of all, we have to put it in standard form, which is a squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. Plus 20 equals to 0. Don't forget, when we change the sign of the terms, we have to change their sign. So 12 was positive, changing the sign it will become negative. 20 was, was negative, changing the sign will become positive. From here, the A coefficient it is 1, B is negative 12, and C it is equals to 20. We do the A. On the top, A times C, down B, and here the two fractions, the A coefficient 1, so it will be 1 times this will be X, and here we put X. Now let's think about the two numbers. When we multiply them, A times C equals A is 1, A C is 20, so it will be equals to 20, and B is a negative 12. So when we multiply their product, it is 20, and we, when we will add them, it will be the sum negative 12. And these are negative 10 times 
negative 2. When we multiply them, the product positive 20, and if we will add them, their sum is negative 12. So the two numbers I found, I put them in place of numerator. Negative 10, negative 2. The two factors, first of all, we check them to be in simplest form. And they are in simplest form. Then, from the first one, we can write. From the second one, x minus 2 equals to 0. So the product it is 0 if at least one of the factors it is 0. So we take it natural. Maybe x minus 10 equals to 0, or maybe x minus 2 equals to 0. In this way, we obtained two linear equations and we have to solve them. Plus and on both of the sides. From the first factor, x equals to 10. Plus 2 on both of the sides. From the second, x it will be equals to 2. And these are the two roots, two solutions of the quadratic equation. have to put its standard form, which is equals to 0. So we put the x on the other side, it will be 4x squared minus 5x. This is positive, when we move it, it will be negative 6 equals to 0. From here, the a coefficient, it is 4, b coefficient, it is negative 5, and c coefficient, it is negative 6. We put the x on the top. A times C, down it is B. A times C, 4 times negative 6, it's a negative 24. And the B, it is negative 5. In the left and right of the X, we make the fraction. In place of the denominator, we said we put the AX. A is 4, so it will be here 4X. And here 4X. In the place of numerator, we think about two numbers. When we multiply their product is negative 4ac and their sum, it will be negative 5. And these are negative 8 times 3. When we multiply negative 24 and if we add them, it will be negative 5. One of them will put it here and the other one in the other fraction. Do not forget always fraction has to be written in simplest form. It will be equals negative 2 over x. This is the first fraction. And this is the second one. From the first fraction, the factor it will be. x minus 2 times from the second fraction. 4x plus 3. Their product equals to 0. The factors it is zero. So we take the first one, x minus two equals zero, plus two on both of the sides. From the first factor, we get x equals two. Four x plus three equals to zero. Solve four x minus three on both of the sides. So four x equals negative three over four on both of the sides. It will be x equals negative three over four which is the second root. Let's try more. The height in feet of a t-shirt launched from a t-shirt cannon height in the stands at a football stadium is given by the function h of x equals negative 16x squared plus 64x plus 80 where x, it is time in seconds. So the x, it is time. Where time has been in seconds. How long it will take before the t-shirt reaches the ground? H represents the height. So when, when the t-shirt reaches the ground, it 
So when the t-shirt is on the ground, there is no height. So instead of making, we will put zero. And then we will obtain negative 60 x squared plus 64 x plus 80 equals to zero. So to solve the quadratic equation, first of all, we have to do is to get the terms into their simplest form by simplif simplifying by their common factor. 16, 64, and 80, their common factor is a negative 60. So each term, we will divide it by negative Always it's much easier to work with small numbers than big numbers. That's why take care. First of all, get the simplest form and after continue your work. So we have x squared, positive, negative, negative, 64 divided 16, it's a 4 x, positive, negative 5, 80 over 16, it is 5, equals to 0. In this quadratic equation, The A coefficient, it is 1. B coefficient is negative 4. And C coefficient, it's a negative 5. So to factor it, you do it now. A times on the top, B down, and you do fractions on the other side. So in our case, A times C, it is negative 5. The B, it is negative 4. A, it's 1, so it will be 1, it is means it. Here. Now think about two numbers. When we multiply their product negative 5 and when we will add it will be a negative 4. And these two numbers are negative 5 times 1. When I multiply negative 5 and when I will add, I will get the negative 4. So one of them I put in numerator here and the other one here. Check the fractions to be in simplest form. In our case they are. So from the first fraction we get the x minus 5. From the second, we get the factor x plus 1 equals to 0. From the first equation, x is 5. And from the second one, x equals to negative 1. Where x represents time in seconds. And now we will analyze these two roots for the quadratic equation. Can it be time negative second? No. So the second root, x equals negative 1, I'm not going to take it in consideration. From here, the time it will be 5 seconds. How to solve a quadratic inequality? First of all, we need to write the quadratic into In quadratic inequality, after this, we'll find or greater than or less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal. Just to remind it to you, if it is greater or less than, the interval it is open. If it is greater than or equals than, the interval it will be closed. But before and to solve it, the inequality, we do the same as we did with equalities. So the quadratic expression, we have to factor it. So let's see. The inequality given, it is x squared greater than x plus 2. It has to be written in standard form, which we said, we have to make it in the right side. It has to be zero. So to make it zero, take the two terms and move them on the other side. And we will find x squared. x is positive. When I move it, it will be negative x. So it's positive. So when we move it, it will be a negative two. Greater than zero. Now, the quadratic, we have to factor it. And we will use again the x matter. A times b, b down, and the two factors. A coefficient 1, b is negative 1, and c, it is negative 2. So, a times c is negative 2, 
B is negative 1. A is, it is 1 times root 2. And now let's think about two numbers. When we multiply their product negative 2, and when we will add them, it will be negative 1. And these two numbers are negative 2 times 1. When I multiply negative 2, and when I will add them, it will be negative 1. These two numbers, we will put them in place of numerator. From the fraction in simplest form, we will get the two factors, which are from the first fraction, it will be x minus 2, times from the second fraction, we have x plus 1, greater than 0. From the first factor, x equals and the second factor is equal to negative 1. Draw the number line and plot on it the two x values we found in counting order from left to right. So the least one is negative 1, which is open. The 2 is the greatest one, which is open too. When we plotted the two x values on the number line, the number line was split into three intervals. As you can see, I have an interval here, another one here, and the third one, it will be here. The question, it will be, from which interval take the x such that when we will put the x in this expression, it will be greater than zero, which means positive. To get the x value, the best and easiest that we can do is to look after the interval which contains the zero value for x because zero is the easiest one to be substituted into the expression. So we take the intervals from left to right. Negative one less than zero, less than negative one, the left factor don't have the zero. The x equals 0, the 0 value, it will be between negative 1 and 2, so I write here x equals 0. This 0 for x, I will take it and substitute it, or in the factorit form, or I can substitute it in this equation. Here it will be easier. So instead of x, we put 0, this term is out, this one is out, it will be left negative 2, so this 2, it is negative. Which means that all for all the values of x from negative 1 to 2, all of them, when we will substitute the equation, it will be, uh, the expression, it will be negative. If we know the sign of one interval, then we can find very easy the sign of the rest of the intervals. So, why? Because if one interval is negative, for example, the other one, it will be positive. And on the other side, it will be positive. You cannot find two consecutive intervals to have the same sign. Or both of them are negative, or both of them, they are positive. The interval we are looking for, it will be where we have greater than zero, which means positive. So we have the positive in this interval, and we have the positive in this interval. So in these two intervals, we are going to have the, to find the solution of this inequality. And to write it, we can say x less than negative 1 or x greater than 2. The two statements, we can put them in one statement only. So we write the x in, uh, in the middle. Always in the right side, it will be less than. And then to the left side, it will be greater than. So from the two inequality, e inequalities, x is less than negative 1 and is greater than 2. Here we have the solution. Let's try more. x minus 3, x plus 3 squared. Greater than or equal to times x squared plus 7. So, as long as the x has the greatest exponent 2, this is quadratic inequality. That we can solve it 
we need the simplest form in standard form. So to get the standard form, we have to remove the bracket. For example, this one. So put that inside, inside of the bracket. This is a Always gives us three terms in the problem, which are the two exponents. I give it to the first term, I give it to the last term. So it will be a square, b square. In the middle, we multiply them all. So two times a times b. It's plus between the terms, so everything it will be positive here. So plus plus. So we will apply x in x plus three square, and we will find. We have binomial square gives us three terms in the product. The square, I will give it to the first term, I will give it to the last term. So it will be x square, 3 square. And I write x square, 3 square, it is 9. The term in the middle, I put it plus the more. 2 times x, 2x, times 3, 6x, plus this. Greater than or equals distribute the 2, so it will be 2x squared plus 14. Get it into the simplest form, minus 2x squared, minus 14. It will be x squared minus 2x. So we will get, don't forget when you have inequality and you have to multiply or divide by negative, don't forget to change the sign of that inequality. So it will be x squared minus 6x. Negative, negative, plus 5. Because we divide it by negative, the sign, we have to change it. So it will be less than or equals to 0. A, it is 1. B is negative 6. And C, it is equals to 5. Use the least method on the top A times B and down on B. And here we put the A in place of the denominator. A one is six. A times C it is five, and B is a negative six. Now let's think about two numbers. When we multiply them, product five, and when we will add, their sum is negative six, and these two numbers are negative five times negative one. So I will put them in place of the numerator. The first fraction simplest form, the second one is the from the second fraction, we we'll get the x minus 1. Less than or equals to 0. Product 0, if at least one of the factors is 0. So if the first factor is 0, it will be equal to 5. If the second factor is 0, equals to 1. Inequality always graph to get the correct solution. So we will draw the number line. The two values 1 and 5, we will plot them on number line in counting order. 1 is less than 5. It is equals to 0, so it is closed in 1, closed in 5. In this way, the number line, it was split Three intervals. Now, we said before, look for the interval which contains the value 0, which is in left of 1. Here somewhere, it will be equal 0. And this 0, we will substitute it in our inequality. So, if we put this 0 here at the top, 
this one out, it will be left 5 positive. So we look for the sign. So less than 1, all the values of this less than 1 being equal to 0. Less than 1 being equal to 0. I lose the sign from 1 interval, I get the sign for the other one. So, if the first one is positive, the second negative, and the last one is positive. The interval which contains the solution, it is less than or equals to zero, which means it's negative, and it's here in the middle. So, then we can write x, it is less than or equals to 5, greater than or equals to 1. So, the x values are between 1 and x. Thank you.